Let's review what happened in Washington at the meeting. Uh, various issues were on the table. One of them was whether or not we can continue with unsustainable debt that we've seen in Southern Europe, for instance, issues around currency manipulation, exporter nations like China, whether we can resuscitate global trade. Did any of those issues really get any real attention? Well, in terms of the dis discussion, yes, they were all on the table. They were discussed. Uh, but, but, but for Africa, we, we, as Africans, we still remain bullish about the continent. Mm -hmm. That is still the best investment destination uh, you know, in recent, recent times, frankly. Yeah. Uh, while some of the upheavals up north or in West Africa are there, uh, there are also opportunities. You know, it means that things will get even right. better uh, going, going forward. So, so, yes, I mean, one issue that could be a risk for Africa, even though we're bullish about it, is the issue of food prices, yeah. which we discussed. Yeah. Uh, uh, and then the oil prices well, for net food importers, it is a risk. For yeah. net oil importers, it is equally a risk. But also we know that 60% of the food inflation is also right. through the oil price, the cost of fuel and, transpo right. and transportation. The other issue, of course, is youth unemployment mm. and inclusive growth. That's a risk for, for Africa everywhere, frankly. Let's talk about this rising uh, threat of global inflation uh, that's been precipitated by rising oil prices and food prices. How much of a threat to global growth is this? Because apparently we now need to reforecast uh, growth figures. <laughs> big piece in West Africa, so that's also going to slow down our focus for, for the whole continent. So it's, it's slightly negative, but not overly so. You talk about the theme of youth employment within the broader context of inclusive growth, and this raises questions about how much we're actually seeing by way of FDI or capital flows coming into Africa, because once the violence and the political unrest erupted in North Africa, we did see temporarily a sell-off in emerging market bonds, and a country like South Africa was impacted, and risk uh, aversion started to impact countries like Nigeria and Kenya as well, drivers of African growth? Uh, ab absolutely. Certainly uh, any such upheaval is um, bound to have a contagion effect because of just simply risk pooling. It's emerging markets. Mm -hmm. It's Africa. So that will have a negative impact in capital. We, we will flow out. I mean, that, that, that's, in, that's inevitable. Um, uh, but, but going forward, my, but my view is that we need longer term solutions for this issue of youth unemployment. And the story, in my view, is entrepreneurship. How do we begin to move people in, into entrepreneurship mm -hmm. through uh, uh, various strategies for structural transformation, right. industrial policy that supports small to medium scale enterprises right. as you can as you have seen in, in South Africa in right. the last few years so much needs to be done around entrepreneurship but also just getting domestic investment going sometimes we, yeah. we focus on foreign direct investment yeah. how about domestic direct so what investment? are the limitations then I don't think we're supporting our entrepreneurs enough I think in Africa there's still some insuspicion between all other lack of trust between the, the private sector and the public sector, yeah. which is un unfortunate. Th that needs to go away. Uh, uh, government is, needs to see the private sector as partners, and the private sector right. must begin to see government as partners. That's important. Yeah. You mentioned MENA, and I'd like to focus on the African Development Bank as an institution, because obviously you've got a broad range of shareholders uh, from Africa and regionally across the world, 77 of them. And one of the key 
financiers within the top eight is a country like Libya, for instance. Um, the crisis in Libya that's unfolding politically, does it have direct bearing on your funding streams, on your operations? Oh, no, 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 it, it doesn't. I mean, the, well, the African Development Bank is well capitalized, uh, so it's really got no impact in terms of the, the funding uh, stream, stream for us. I think the issue is do we have enough resources to help a Libya? to help Egypt, to help uh, Tunisia, and so forth. Uh, because we know that, uh, uh, looking at things, Tunisia needs something like $2 billion mm. uh, to get going. And, and, and you know, uh, Egypt, $4 billion. Uh, uh, Libya, it doesn't need money as such, but it needs technical uh, assistance. Mm -hmm. uh, can we give them enough technical assistance to restructure the economy when things normalize, no, uh, normalize mm -hmm. to begin to grow a private sector, uh, mm -hmm. that, that, to, to help its, its uh, higher education institutions to be more commercially oriented? Mm -hmm. uh, I, do we have enough resources to do that? The answer is no. So we need coordination among the development partners, not just us, is the World Bank, is European Development Bank, is the Islamic Development Bank to work together to help these countries. Mm -hmm. And in my view, if we do, the, the only way is up for them because the, the change is positive. It's not just uh, the meaner states that are in crisis. We've also just had a crisis resolved tentatively in a country like Cote d'Ivoire. That's where the AFDB used to have headquarters. And many people are looking to the African Development Bank to set the tone for multilateral um, uh, technical support and donor aid into the new Ouattara government. What's your approach to Cote d'Ivoire? We, we, are, we, are, we would like to support the government. We will be supporting the government there in the country uh, to move forward. They've chosen a specific path. We never interfere politically or have an opinion politically, but we say as long as people have chosen a path, mm -hmm. they're sticking to international norms of running a country mm -hmm. and, and treating its, its citizens uh, likewise, we will support it. We're ready to support uh, every cost in terms right. of budget support, infrastructure investment, supporting the private sector in, in what form to right. make things work. It's, it's an important pillar in West Africa. Right. We would like to see the country succeed. We've run out of time, but very briefly, what do you make of events in Southern Africa? Recently, uh, the president of the AFDB was in Zimbabwe to help launch the multi-donor uh, facility. Subsequently, we've seen indigenization laws, guidelines being introduced, jitters, particularly within the mining sector. You may not interfere politically, but certainly you must be able to say something as the African Development Bank when politics sometimes interferes with the broader reconstruction. Uh, the, the issue about the private sector involvement in any economy is about the protection of, of ownership rights. In, in my view, there's nothing wrong with a country coming up with its own investment laws. But the idea is that once someone has invested, then you should not expropriate whatever they've invested. But if they go in, well knowing what the rules are, they cannot then complain about the rules afterwards. It's a bit like what you have in South Africa, where we'll say, you will have a BEE partner to bid for a specific a transaction. Mm -hmm. If you know that, you can't complain about it afterwards. So, so we, we will support whatever the private sector is willing to take risk on, uh, without really taking too much of an opinion. Uh, <laughs> for, this, for us, the issue is, is expropriation, it's uh, property rights, it's ownership rights. As long as that is respected, uh, we have no difficulty.